The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. These aren't just about the... Where'd you bag them, Lucas? Up on the Rincon. You ever seen any nicer-looking birds, Micah? There's a hitch to it, Lucas. You got that grin. Oh, no hitch. You cook them. Mark and I'll help you eat them. Hattie Store Marshal broke into them. Me and some of the other boys have them trapped on the inside. Side door, Micah. He was prying it open as we were going by. He's still in there? He's there, all right. You sure? I saw him. I'm going to stand here all night. I want to hear your name, where you're from. I can't get a word out of her. Hold it. Nobody's going to hurt you. Go on back. She's frightened. And ought to be. No, like an animal waiting to be hurt, expecting it. I've seen her before, I know, but I... What's your name, girl? Tell me. Are you from around here? Oh, wait a minute. I know who she is. Heller Chase. The Chase girl, of course. Yeah, Mark knows her younger brother, David. Well, who are the Chases? Oh, family of dirt farmers. The rock country up Onion Creek. Dan Chase. Well, you didn't know him. He died before you came. Left a wife, two kids, Heller here, and a younger brother, David. About a year later, their mother Remarried. A whiskey-soaked drifter named Bechtel. Bechtel? Say, isn't he that miserable? That's the one, all right. Well, sure, I remember now. Had him in jail three or four times, howling off drunks. Did he send you in to steal? Your stepfather, did he send you in? I haven't seen her since Dan's funeral. <laughs> Grown up right under our feet. Well, of course, I've no mind to hold her, Hattie, unless you... She didn't take anything. Now, if you'll only tell me what you're after. A ribbon. A blue ribbon for my hair. Ooh. Well, come on, Heller. I'll see you inside. No. Just go, please. All right, come on. No, Bob, no! Oh! Andrew, don't leave him be! Where's she gone? Where? I'm out of here. Oh, no! Come on, boy, you're gonna tell me I'm gonna have to lay and face you, huh? Get to your room, boy. Yeah! Uh, if there ain't a picture. A picture of what? Running off into the night, no word where. Leaving her kin to fret themselves sick over what might have happened. The way young'uns behave these days, no respect for their elders. Enough to make a body turn in his grave with worry. Ain't that right, Mr. McCain? Look, Bechtol, if you've got something to say, say it. Where did you find her? That's what I want to know. Where? In town. It figures. Now, you listen to me. Listen to what, huh? 
She broke into Hattie Denton's store. That's where we found her. Yeah. Well, you can check it in town. There's a half dozen people who know. Oh, the word of Lucas McCain. It's all the word a body needs. So much for bringing her home. Out. I thank you for bringing her, Lucas. You're a leaf. I'm beholden. Good night. Thank you for bringing her, Lucas. I'm beholden. Mighty fine words, I'd say. Words a woman usually reserves for the man that feeds her, puts clothes on her back and a roof over her head. I was only trying to... I... Run it off with a knife, bringing trash down on my name. Andrew, I'll walk her. I'll do that, but don't... Where have you been? Tell me. I was where he said in that store. After what? I want to know. Whiskey. Lies. Whiskey for you. Yeah, nothing for me. Nothing from you. Not ever. Unless I beat it out of you first. This time for you. All for you. Whiskey to burn out your insides and maybe if it burns... Ah! Ella, don't say a thing. Be kind. My... You get to your room. Get there before I color your hide four shades of purple. When you got the truth in your mouth, come out. Too late, you rot. With you? Her. Let me see. I got caught before I could get it out of the store. You mean you had it in your hands and all I had time for was to hide it? Where? In the apple barrel near the front door. Well, then listen. All we gotta do is tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll go into the store and I'll say be watching me careful after tonight. Well, me? You too, and listen. Mr. McCain. I heard him talking to Miss Hattie about going into a store tomorrow noon for supplies. What? You listen. Tomorrow morning, I'll fix his breakfast and you do things for him. Him? And liquor. Instead of hiding it, we'll give it to him. Then he'll fall asleep like he does. That'll give us three hours to get into town into that store. But you said we couldn't go in there, not alone. We won't be alone. Well, the next time he beats us. Oh, Mama. I hate him, Hell, I hate him so awful. Shh. We'll be ready for him. Son, you're going after that hay like you heard the trout were running, and maybe you'd uh, like the afternoon off. Yes, yeah, Strawn. I knew you were going into town today, so I thought I'd finish my chores and maybe keep you company. Oh. Can I guess again? Well, I told you. I thought maybe you'd want me to keep you company. Mm hmm. It, uh,. Doesn't have anything to do with maybe uh, how he's got some of those licorice sticks in, huh? Well, you know, I, I thought maybe we'd stop by just in case. Mm. Just in case, huh? Say, so, you know, talking about Hattie's store, I can't stop thinking about what you told me happened there last night. Well, how do you mean? Well, imagine Heller Chase breaking into Hattie's store. I just can't believe it. She always seemed to be so nice. Sometimes when her brother Dave and I used to go fishing, she'd sit next to me and I'd talk with her. Never thought she'd break into a store. Well, I can't blame you for what you're thinking, Mark. But to my mind, what Heller did last night doesn't make her a criminal. She was only after a hair ribbon. You know, son, sometimes people are pushed into doing things they wouldn't ordinarily do by circumstances beyond their control and by certain other people. Now, you've been fishing with David. Has he ever talked to you about his home life since his pa passed away? Well, David doesn't talk much about anything. He's usually pretty quiet, just sits and fishes. Well, he and his sister don't have it too easy at home, Mark. Their stepfather is a pretty hard man to live with. Yeah, I've seen him in town coming out of that last chance saloon. Mm. That's where he spends most of his time when he's in town. You know, Paul, uh, I'm kind of lucky. How do you mean? Well, I know Dave can't talk to his Paul like I can to you. It, 
it kind of helps a fellow when he can talk things out instead of having to keep them to himself. <clears throat> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. Oh, come on, Sprout. I thought you were going to keep me company. Oh, come on. Guess I'd see you in town today. He sent us. Have to learn in the price of chicken feed. Oh, the feed store's across the street. Isn't it ever so pretty? I never had nothing like that all my life. Well, never even a ribbon. Not since Papa died. Never once. An old girl ought to have a ribbon, it seems. Well, I wouldn't ask you not ever. Couldn't be much. Come on. Oh, Harry. Hello, Lucas. Mark. David, look at them things. Dresses. You ever see so many dresses? And shoes and hats and, and over there food. Oh, all them sacks and cans of things to eat and chew and, and even a barrel of apples. Ribbons, Hattie. Blue ones. If I had me a dollar, you know what I'd do? I'd buy me one of those and some of those and a big box full of licorice all over with sugar. Boy. <laughs> Do there. Well, an apple, just an apple. Well, all you have to do is ask. Oh, yes, right now. Let me find you a real good one. These on the top seem kind of green. This one. Oh, Miss Hattie, can I please have this ribbon, please? Would you tighten back for me in a bow? Oh, Tell me I ain't looking down on me and mine. I'll be back later, Hattie. Come on, Mark. McCain, you hear me? Just because I'm poor and ain't got the means, I give you a right. Find favors with a penny's worth of ribbon. No man, McCain, making me out trash. Town, he'll take to us, you know. Maybe he won't this time. All drunk the way we saw him, he will. Yeah. That's the only way to be rid of him. His beatings. The way he makes us live. Makes Mama live. Well, what's gonna stop him? If only Papa was here. But Papa's not here. I'm not sure that we should. You're not sure? Well, I'm sure. Now, we're gonna give him another chance. He won't change, can't you see? When he comes home, we're going to talk to him and tell him how we feel. Maybe if we tell him how we feel, he'll change. He won't change, not ever. Only with that. Papa, help me. Please, help me.
sun's going down early, Mark. We'd better get the wagon unloaded before we lose the light. What did he say? We'd better get the wagon unloaded. Oh. Something bothering you, Mark? No. Uh -uh. I hope you're not upset because I didn't answer Bechtol back there in town. You know, if I had tangled with him then, Mark, all I'd have been doing was bringing myself down to his level. The way I figure a situation like that is, the best thing to do is walk off and ignore it. Thanks for explaining that to me, Paul, but, well, it's not what was bothering me. Well, then what is it? What it is is, if, if a person sees something that's none of his business, and if what he sees is wrong, well, does he keep shut up about it, or does he tell? Well, if it's wrong, what do you think? Well, it wasn't the apples he was after. What do you mean? David Chase today in Miss Denton's store. Well, he pulled a gun out of the apple barrel. Gun? I, he stuffed it into his shirt. I saw him. What are you talking about, Mark? Oh, you know when Howard Chase was preening with all those ribbons? Well, she was really trying to hold your attention while Dave snuck over to the apple barrel and pulled out the gun. Gun and an apple barrel. Well, I don't know how it got there, but I know it was a gun. I'm sure. Will you finish up alone? Sure. Well, I'll be back later. Hey, Mark, you did right to tell me. to worthless, a daughter that's no better than a teasing flirt, a lazy, good-for-nothing son that... Where's that boy? Where is he? Boy, you hear my word? You come here before me, eh? Names you are yourself till there's no escape from the fear of you. Not even in sleep. <laughs> 
You put that down in here no. before I have a mind to take this rope and to... Well, wait a minute. You're all head up. He ain't thinking. Work for the softness in me, I... I'd whack the breath out of you. Now, you give me that. Get away from you, David. You hear what I say? Get right away from the wall. Oh, just a minute. What I mean is... You're building this thing on them things you said about me. You're wrong, girl. You're wrong. What? I, I may have done a few things that were imprudent, as any man that's trying the best for his kin might. Well, what I'm saying is, no man is perfect. I, I tried. I, I always tried. There's that. And, and, and all the things I've done for you and for them, and like being a father and such. Boy, tell her she's wrong. <laughs> Make her understand what she's doing. Tell her to stop. Uh, I'm a poor man. Poor. Maybe what's got a sinner three on his conscience, but that's the only thing a man can do with these poor. Please. You should do this. Because you want to change me. I'll change you. I swear it. I'll never lay a hand on you again. Not a hair on your head, nor on the boy. Nor... Never again. I'll stand for you. Anything you want. A ribbon. No. No, don't shoot me. I beg you. I beg you. Don't do it. Kill him. Kill him. You do, and you'll spend the rest of your life suffering for it. I don't care. Muriel, for heaven's sake, tell her. I can't, Lucas. What is it you want, Heller? To make him suffer the way he's made you suffer? Yes. Well, look at him. Don't you see what he is? A frightened, terrified man. You let him live, and he'll suffer the rest of his life. That's why he turns on you. Trying to make you fear him the way he fears everything and everybody. It's a terrible thing for you. It gnaws at you. It eats away what strength you've got. Till there's nothing left. Let him live. The cruelest punishment you can give him. Peter, child Peter, sending those kids Stephen. Be a hat full of seasons before he sees the sunny side of prison wall, did you? Well, Lucas, I got things to do. Be seeing you. Yeah. Mark? Bye. Well, hello, Heller. How's your mother? Bye, Dave. Mark? Fine. She's fine. I... We just wanted to... What he means is, the way we got you all mixed up in this and using you to get that gun, we're awful grateful, Lucas. Just can't tell you what you've done for us. It gives me sort of a powerful, strong feeling. Well, thank you, Heller. I'm mighty glad to hear that. You are? If I were to ever have a daughter, I'd want her to be exactly like you. You tell your mother we'll be up from time to time, huh? Maybe we can even get a summer crop to grow, huh, David? It'll grow, Mr. McCain. It'll grow. Bye.